Welcome. It's Web Wednesday. It's a virtual one. It does say, oops, that's side, HK, but I'm actually in BKK uh, with Jane Chan over there. It's hard to do this backwards. In Hong Kong at Invest Hong Kong headquarters, Jane Chan heads up, start me up. Been going for eight years now, one of the best, most active conferences for the startup world. We'll talk about it a little bit more in a moment. And uh, Jay, it's so nice to talk to you. I did get to hang out with you in Hong Kong last week, which was cool. Oh, I learned, sorry, the week before, but you, you look well. Tell me, uh, how's it going? You've got, what, three weeks left before Hong Kong gets inundated by FinTech, health tech, prop tech, AI, gaming folk. How are you preparing for all of this? It's um, you know, it's, it's thank you so much, Napoleon. It's so nice to be like talking on your platform again. Actually, thank you for having me. Um, as you can probably imagine, it's all hands on deck. There's a lot of different things happening. We've got Hong Kong FinTech Week, which is happening at the end of October. That's been organised by my colleagues in the FinTech team. And then after that, of course, on the 7th to the 18th of November, we have the Start Me at Hong Kong Festival. And uh, I know we're going to talk a little bit more about that um, later on, but it's, as you can probably imagine, this close to quite a major event. We are, you know, doing lots of different types of marketing. There's press conferences, there's liaising with uh, the different event organizers, confirming speakers, delegations, all super exciting, but it's, it's, incredibly hectic at the moment i can imagine this is this the first one that's like come out of uh covid right because initially i guess last year was still all masked up and kind of restricted so i can imagine people are for, probably very excited to be there in person is that right am i right in that assumption you are you are correct actually so for the past three years we've had either purely virtual and last year we had hybrid um, versions of the festival where you're right we were all still masked and you know it's very different this is going to be the first year you know that we're all going to be completely maskless in person um, a lot of the events I will uh, still be on a hybrid kind of basis but you know a lot of people are looking forward to properly celebrating the, the, the startup ecosystem here in Hong Kong and and just interacting on a platform when you haven't got any kind of restrictions and in terms of masks, in terms of drinking, eating, um, you know, all that whole socializing, networking side, which is a hugely important part of any kind of conference. Um, but yeah, everyone is looking forward to getting back into that. Yeah, it's funny because I, I um I was there at a conference myself recently and the energy was, it was like somebody had like let out teenagers from the library, you know, it was, it was, <laughs> it was unbelievable. I was like, wow. <laughs> so uh, I also see it kind of times nicely because at this time of year, Hong Kong is, well, I, I was listening to the weather report this morning, but it wasn't particularly cool, but it cools down, right? And uh, so going outside, hang out by the harbor, I, I know the government's been pushing this kind of nightlife thing. So I guess, Maybe let's just start with some of the events that are happening around, and then we can then zoom in on what's actually happening for the conference. So the dates so so the fintech week is is the week before, and that those dates again, sorry, were those are the thirtieth of October to the fifth of November. Okay, so and, and that's the, like that. Yeah. Guy, Guy Fawkes night, as us Brits would know, and then with five, <laughs> yeah. fireworks and bonfires or. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> one hopes not one hopes not one hopes hopefully not. there's not going to be a lot of burning going on yeah and maybe some incense and then uh we've got the start me up festival which is the 8th to the 17th right so that's a good time so what's happening around the peripheries because people are flying in i guess you've got a very healthy local community um what are the numbers in terms of what you're seeing uh what are you expecting this year we are expecting probably close to um, about 20,000 people in person um, turning up for the festival. We're expecting a sizable percentage of that to come from international kind of um, markets as well. Overseas um, tech hubs and locations where uh, there is a lot of interest in, in the potential of the, the Hong Kong startup ecosystem, the business opportunities here. So we're expecting delegations from like the UK, for example, the U. Um, the UK, we're expecting delegations from Italy, um, India, 
um, ASEAN, um, as well as a few other kind of locations as well. So, you know, there will be a, a lot of kind of international uh, attendees coming over, speakers who's going to be sharing insights from their point of view. Some of them are even organizing their own side events as well. Um, so it's, it's, it's going to be a really nice time, I think, um, you know, after the whole you, kind of restrictions. In the Middle East as well, right? So you've got, you're tapping into the kind of energy of startup mm -hmm. world in the Middle East, right? And not just India, South Asia, but also in the Middle East. So uh, that looks like an interesting. Yeah. So let's start with yeah. um, the program. You've got, I, what I always find interesting about when you first started Start Me Up, when we were kind of, helping you know part of the ecosystem in hong kong it was just like one one thing right and like everything internet it's kind of specialized and we've got fintech week happening the week before we've got prop tech we've got health tech we've got all kinds of stuff maybe it'd be really interesting just to drill down into uh you know I, i've got the website here which is startmeup.hk correct um yes and just going through, it's like it's it's a lot to digest, but I think it'd be good just to tickle the surface um, because you're you're obviously running it all. But there's this idea that I think is really sweet, which is um, what Jumpstart are doing in terms of going to Ocean Park. Uh, maybe explain a little bit about that. Are we all going to be dancing around Ocean Park and kind of pretending to be sharks? <laughs> or what's going to go on? Tell yeah. us. Um, okay, if you don't mind, I might just step back a little bit first, just to give sure. people an idea of what this this um this festival or this I mean, Hong Kong festival is. It's um this is going to be our eighth iteration actually, so it's been running for quite a while. And as you mentioned, this is going to be our. I'm sorry. I said gay hole. Eight, brilliant. Gay hole. <laughs> Face <laughs> hole. Um, so yeah, so this is uh, our eighth one, and it's going to be a, a two week kind of like um startup events festival where we've got events that we're basically partnering with different event organizers to host, and it's going to focus on a number of different kind of industries, sectors, and and focuses. So, um, that's that's the big kind of like picture in terms of the main events there's mm -hmm. also a whole bunch of like community events that has been hosted separately by companies as well so there really is a lot going on now going back to the innovation ocean that jumpstart media is actually hosting at um, ocean park there is going to be lots of really fun things about it they are really leveraging the fact that you know this is one of um, hong kong's main theme parks you know, with slides, with um, aquarium and the different kind of activities. So Jumpstart is actually going to be hosting activities like, um, you know, the investor pitches on the Ferris wheel, for example, that you can sign up for. Um, there's actually real pitches happening in the shark tanks. Um, there's going to be, you know, a conference with like some really exciting like Web3 um and you know, crypto kind of speakers happening in the in Whiskers Theatre. This is like the the round kind of performing kind of theatre that's um, that's normally used by Ocean Park. So lots and lots of things happening there. And there's also for some VIPs, there's like a networking dinner and lunches. So it's going to be a, a lot no of things seafood. happening there. No seafood on the menu. I I, I just imagine <laughs> one hopes not. The Web three thing <laughs> with the seals is quite entertaining to me because you know. The kind of crypto metaverse world is kind of uh, is got a few few waves going on at the moment. I'd love to see a few of these folk like juggling balls, bouncing back and forwards to each other whilst pitching their 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 most recent crypto. But I know this is a big thing in Hong Kong, right? The Hong Kongers maybe been a bit slow to it, but suddenly like really put Web three and that whole licensing and uh, kind of official approach to it on the table. So you have seen this as having I guess it's having quite an effect on the fintech element, which is the week before, but also in this kind of Web3 metaverse world. It's, it is. I mean, we're seeing a huge amount of interest um, from company overseas within the, the Web3, the crypto kind of space, because as you mentioned, you know, the regulators have been actually relaxing and actually bringing out some special licenses 
that enable you know exchanges for example to actually sell to retail customers this is all you know very new and because hong kong is one of the world's financial centers and it's providing this kind of clarity in terms of what you can and can't do and basically the the criteria in which you can operate um it's generating a huge amount of interest actually and the the actually the regulators have been looking at this for quite a long time and you know they've taken quite a prudent approach in terms of you know consultation papers and basically talking to different stakeholders before they actually came up with these kind of um you know license licensing regimes and i think that shows i think there's a there's a good balance there between um you know the kind of safety that you always want for the the general retail customers versus you know allowing innovation and, and tech to to happen and the fact that you know crypto isn't going away um so it's, it's you know hong kong has actually really embraced that the government has set up different kind of um committees as well to develop this space further there's you know, the, even the, the mainland Chinese government has, has come out and said that they want Hong Kong to be that international kind of Web3 crypto kind of arm for the, you know, for the, the country. So it's um it's, it's generating massive amounts of interest. And, and therefore, yes, you know, we the, there is quite a big component of that throughout the different events that are going on during the Start Me Up Hong Kong Festival, including um Innovation Ocean. But the other big one is actually going to be um, shown and discussed quite a bit across not just in the fintech side but across other different industries it's actually the game on events that will run from the 16th to the 17th of november and the game on the game actually stands for gaming art music and entertainment and of course that's where web3 is you know ideally placed i mean in fact it was a gaming side that really generated that whole metaverse discussion and and you know shown like um what what it was you know that, that new generation of, of like um the future internet what it could potentially look like by leveraging that kind of 3d environment and things so there's going to be some fantastic discussions there and in fact i should just mention that we've um, we've confirmed uh top who is the the founder and ceo of um one of asia's you know oldest crypto exchange based in thailand uh, is actually going to be speaking at um, at game on one of the key yeah, the game angle is system. always interesting because hong kong has always had a quite a healthy uh ecosystem of you know game creation game marketing you know companies that either have taken product and i've interviewed a few over the years you know taken games from overseas brought them into china or taken chinese games and kind of help them go overseas and obviously we've got 10 cent across the border and you know yeah. they've a lovely office there they used to have a lovely office in times square right right next to alibaba so there's a bit of battle going there but i think the gaming angle is really interesting and um it's always interesting too to me from the advertising industry because they never quite get it and how to use it but i know i'm looking forward to seeing what comes out of that and with the music scene in hong kong right you know we've uh we need to put it back on the map i know now it's kind of k-pop seems to be the big one and being in thailand it's all about black pink lisa so, uh, you know, we're looking forward to <laughs> seeing. I want to see Hong Kong come and sing it. So we've got Game On. Then we've got, quite interestingly, you know, obviously, you know, Hong Kong is known for property and it's known for, you know, the big conglomerates. And a, a lot of people uh, have made money or sold technology to property. So tell me a bit more about what's going on in the, in the property space, because obviously, there's a lot of elements to that, whether it's sustainability or just smart cities, smart buildings. And, you know, nowadays coming out of COVID, people are like physicality of where you set up an office is a very different, different thing, right? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, the whole COVID situation um, has really given quite a shock to the industry, actually, frankly. I think, um, you know, previously, I think in, real estate kind of developers, companies were looking at leveraging technology more or less a, a kind of marketing angle, you know, to say like, you know, our buildings have these kind of smart lamps or, you know, uh, these different types of uh, 
uh, aircon systems, for example. But I think when um, the COVID lockdown happened and people really couldn't get out and there was a different way of working, I, I think um, the real estate kind of um, industry really had to take stock and think, how do I reach this you know, this new or, or these existing customers, even not even new customers, um, because they can't come and visit our locations or, you know, how do we deal with things like disinfecting our shopping malls or, you know, look at, you know, the way that people are working, they're all go, they're working from home. How do we actually basically accommodate that new way of working um so it was actually a real shock to the system and i think and, and a lot of the the developers suddenly got very serious we, we started seeing them you know attending various kind of startup events a few years ago but it's very much on the peripherals um in terms of just maybe seeing and learning what was happening um but the past few years we've actually seen um Quite a few of the big conglomerates actually getting chief innovation officers or dedicating funds to actually invest in prop tech because they're having to, frankly. Um, so it's it's good to see that you know we've we've got this kind of um this big potential kind of market and, and Hong Kong does have a lot of developers in that real estate industry, you know, similar to Bangkok is, is very big. Um, so this event, the PropTech event um, being hosted on the 14th of November, it's called the Real Estate Beyond 2023, and it's being organized by Asia PropTech. It really is going to focus on, on some of the, the real details. It's going to be talking about some of the new innovations um, within the PropTech industry, which as you mentioned, is actually quite a wide kind of area you know, everything from nano to, you know, the, the, the sort of online kind of systems for managing um, property buildings and things like that, you know, have some of that, but it also have like, a, you know, something like 10, like quite intimate round tables being hosted to really drill down on some of the issues that um, the real industry um it's real estate industry is facing and, you know, what can basically be done to actually mitigate or help some of these these um, areas of, you know, whether yeah, they're I, I issues always, or whether they're conflict. As you know, I work with a lot of uh, my, my own or other people's startups and kind of help accelerate them. And it's always, you know, the, the kind of second question is, have you got a, a property client on your, uh, you know, because that's how you know that you're you're kind of doing well and you've got some opportunity to grow, right? You need a name there on your, on your books. And, uh, but I've seen also what's interesting is property is very shopping mall driven and kind of, you know, multi-purpose that you get in Hong Kong, like with the MTR. I know the MTR is kind of cracking through some quite interesting projects they're doing with payment or whatever, and they're kind of changing, you know, using the, the fact they have, you know, a very large volume of people coming through with shops, with real estate. So I think it's very interesting to have that as a choice because in, in other markets, it's very disfragmented, right? So tech companies coming in, the ability to have volume of traffic and retail and kind of, I guess, you know, behind the scenes stuff is logistics and all that is, is an interesting angle. Uh, I actually, during, during COVID, it's quite interesting because I work with some, some of the property companies that it was like, how do you remotely entice people to, to kind of come to your shops? So providing this kind of before the AI days, right? Providing access through WhatsApp and WeChat to a shop where you could, you know, get the salesperson to show you stuff and then order it online and kind of pick it up surreptitiously when there's no crowds, right? So there's, I think it drives innovation. So that's quite an interesting, interesting angle. So PropTech, tell me one angle that I, you know, we don't often, when you think of Hong Kong, well, if you lived in Hong Kong, you know, there's loads of nature and, you know, basically that's how you survive, right? People like you live on, or and lived on islands or live on islands or escape into the mountains, right? To get away from the concrete. So there is a, I saw there's a summit on kind of sustainability impact, and that's a growing, you know, growing industry. A lot of investors are looking at that. I know a few startups kind of working with, funnily enough, still working with blockchain. Maybe you could explain a little bit around that, what's going on there. So the 1.5C Summit, um, obviously, you know, by its name, it is focused on um, sustainability and climate in particular. Um, and it's, this one is, is actually focused on, on four different kind of areas um, that potentially can be addressed with technology to mitigate kind of climate change. I mean, the fact is, it's 
you know, the, the, the climate change issue is probably going to be the biggest issue of our lifetime at this moment. It's, it's just so big. And I think that's why there is a, a global kind of interest in this area. There's no escaping it. This is that everyone has got to look at this in some kind of way, whether we're just talking about, you know, the average kind of house at home, um, you know, household, or whether you're a massive conglomerate. That is something that we've all got to do. And I think, um, you know, that's why Eureka Nova, which is actually part of um, uh, New World Group, you know, one of the, the Hong Kong's main kind of um, conglomerates, which has a large property kind of arm. Um, they started the Eureka Nova Innovation Unit to try and find some solutions within the kind of sustainability climate space to actually um, bring it in house to do proof of concepts and potentially to invest in those companies. And, you know, that's that's why they they focused on, on this kind of innovation side. This, they, they know that technology can help in lots of different areas, you know, especially through the different kind of businesses. And, and they want to try and meet as many companies in that space as possible, hence the creation of this unit. So this um, event will be very much focused on, you know, things like um, waste disposal systems, um, you know, electricity generation and things like that, or how to basically leverage technology where you can, um, whether we're talking about within, um, you know, the, the kind of office kind of space or whether we're talking about the day-to-day -day kind of operations of SMEs, um, they're, they're going to be like showcasing, um, you know, investors that's going to be talking about that. Some of the tech that's happening, there's like a, an exhibition side of it where, you know, you'll see some really innovative kind of companies doing different things um, on the, the climate tech side. And they'll be talking about credit, carbon credit exchanges, green transport, all these different things. So, so super interesting. And I think really in line with also, um, again, a requirement from the government side and regulators for companies to actually start doing a lot more in this kind of space. So it's actually a part of a trend that, that um, you know, companies have to go along. And it's also trying to make that in a way that's easily um, palatable and basically showcase some of the developments that are happening. So super exciting, actually. And it affects that bottom line too, right? The whole ESG thing. The great thing about, I was looking at the location here, is that, that it's actually going to be quite an easy building to find because it's the only one in Quarry Bay that has grass growing on the outside of it, right? And so, what's <laughs> <Yes. laughs> there? I had to learn the Cantonese grass, which uh, can be used, yeah. So maybe that building was interesting. Now, you you have a personal connection to this, right? Because every time I've, I've watched a movie about, about the climate, it's got something to do with bees, right? So uh, you're, you're, you are famed in certain circles of being a beekeeper, right? So I guess I guess you're you're you've been in the prop tech space, nature tech, quite a while. So uh let, let's see uh, if that... Yeah, I have been. Yeah, I have been. My my bees have been it was very much a, a case of um just seeing the you know the issues with bees for people who don't know we're losing bees left, right and center for a whole number of different kind of reasons. I've always been very you know, trying to encourage the people to try and, and keep bees where they can to try and just do the little bit to try and keep the numbers up because bees are so important in pollination. But the other thing you might not know, Napoleon, is also I'm a very big compost person too. I actually have, um, I, 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 I know, yeah. I actually give talks on, on composting um, as you well. Because, I'm uh, again, uh, maybe, maybe you should, uh, you know, once, you know, that's a thing to retire into compost, but we can have a, that could be the next <laughs> Um, so, so let's. There's got. I think there's. Um, obviously, you know, we, we've talked about the the prop tech. The other thing that is interesting is, and people don't often, you know, from outside Hong Kong, don't also think about this. Is is the kind of health, you know, side of things? Because I know, you know, Hong Kong, uh, COVID, SARS, whatever. We we have some amazing scientists that come up with all kinds of cures and ways to tackle it. Right with uh, so. I think, and obviously there's big VC groups, some set up by family offices who had you know, personal reasons for doing this. Um, so I, you know, tell us a little bit more about what's going on there, because I don't think that's normally on people's radar when you talk about Hong Kong. Yeah, I don't think it is. And it's, um, it's, it's actually surprising, actually, because Hong Kong has long been a place where a lot of the, the mainland Chinese come to. 
actually to to see the doctors here um you know a medical kind of tourism to a certain extent because there is that level of trust and expertise and and the latest kind of like developments within the medical field being practiced here so there's long been that kind of tradition um so you know the whole kind of health side especially now with um, the health tech and biotech Hong Kong has actually been embracing that for quite a while. And in fact, we are the world's second biggest um, fundraising location for biotechs because the, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange a few years ago basically changed its rules to allow um, pre-revenue biotech companies to actually to list. And, you know, it's a massive help because typically that kind of like... Um, you know, biotechs are not like other kind of startups. They require much longer development time in terms of R&D. They've got a lot more obstacles to jump through um, in terms of regulations when they sell to different kind of countries, you know, and they should, obviously, because it's so important. Um, so it's actually really hard to have the, the kind of funding for a very long runway. And I think when, um, you know, the Hong Kong Stock Exchange changed its rules, Hong Kong being a very kind of trusted kind of financial center is kind of market. It, a lot of companies basically you know came here to list and, and basically using that revenue to fund more of their basically r d and development kind of runway so that whole space is actually incredibly vibrant here in hong kong and then the you know the last couple of years the government has also set up these kind of r d hubs at science park to focus on different areas of you know, of health tech, including, you know, AI, robotics, biotech and things. So, yeah, so I, I think, um, you know, Brink is organizing the Asia Healthcare Innovation Summit as part of the festival as well. And they're going to be tapping into some of the speakers and the community that's really involved in, in driving some of those developments, both in Hong Kong and also actually across Asia. Um, again, this, this festival is incredibly international. You know, we expect about 30% of the attendees to come from overseas and you know there's going to be I just lots of things to, to learn about of those how many would be coming from across the border into hong kong from mainland china you know yeah, we will be expecting people from mainland China, from, you know, I mentioned delegations from Europe, um, also from India. We're expecting people from obviously Asia as well. So, yeah, very international. I and mean, what I find interesting about the health tech is I've, you know, kind of interviewed a few people over the years or worked with a few is that a lot of initially in Hong Kong, a lot of it was device related, right? Because obviously having Shenzhen across the border and the manufacturing, you know, you just kind of leap across and you go and you go to like shopping malls full of equipment right um so hardware to put together devices so it's interesting to see you know how this is expanding out of the device world it's typically you know the idea has been born in hong kong and maybe manufactured or kind of prototypes made in shenzhen and then brought across the border and funded here to go overseas so i think that's uh that's an interesting one and and uh what's the final one we got here yeah there's a there's a can be a competition. You can't. It is Hong Kong. You can't do anything without competition. So, uh, well, tell me about the competition. I know this is probably not the only one, but there's. Uh, you've managed to bring Silicon Valley to Hong Kong, which you know several VC folk have tried over the years. Uh, so tell us about <laughs> the competition. Uh, it sounds interesting. Yeah. Actually, there's two major startup competition going on. So I'll, I'll touch on the first one first, because um, you mentioned the, the Silicon Valley angle. So we are going to be hosting the Asia finale for um, Pegasus Tech Ventures, who are a very established VC firm from Silicon Valley, um, who are hosting, you know, a number of like re um, global heat, sorry, regional heats um, in different locations and the kind of like the finale for each region will be held in different locations for Asia it's going to be held in Hong Kong and there's going to be a bunch of companies pitching uh, there's going to be like financial kind of um, rewards that they can potentially win but also the opportunity to actually reach to their big final finale in um, in San Francisco in December where you know they can pitch to literally hundreds of investors I mean um, Pegasus Tech Ventures is, is very well established over there, they invested in some of the, the big, big tech firms, you know, that are becoming household names now. So they've got that, that long pedigree. We're actually working with their Chinese um, operation in, in 
um, Chengdu and, you know, it's been great collaborating with them. So, you know, we're expecting to see some really, really strong companies and a lot of investors are, are coming over to, to attend that. That's has the, 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 uh, the gates closed for that competition or can people still, can people still join? Can you sign up or is there a kind of pre-qualifying round that's already happened? Is it like the Asian Games? Yeah. Is it, is it <laughs> Basically, yes, that, that's what's happened. They, they had local heats in a number of different cities in, in Asia. So it really are the, you know, the winners and the top kind of finalists that will be pitching at this regional finale. Um, but another competition I also wanted them to talk about is actually Alibaba's um, startup competition, their global jump starter um, events that they've been holding for several years now and the, the rewards for that is actually you know quite big there's actually potentially five million um, US dollars actually up for grabs in terms of one winner or shared across the, the board shared across several categories but not a huge amount um, so you know for, for promising companies they've been holding again um, local heats in different locations and all these finalists will be flown to Hong Kong and basically pitch for that big opportunity and you know because of the, the number of investors involved the categories involved and of course the fact that you know, Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund, you know, just even that that name is actually a massive attraction. We are expecting to see some really, really strong companies across areas such as, you know, sustainability, robotics, AI, um, actually coming to Hong Kong to pitch for that. And that event is actually open, you know, free to the public. And, and it's part of Alibaba's much bigger um, you know, Tech by the Harbour event they've got is a multi-venue, multi-week kind of event along the TST waterfront. Is so really iconic. As well, or just the waterfront? It's going to be running from the cultural centre at TST right through to K11 at Museum. Um, so that's actually quite a large stretch mm. of, of the waterfront. So they're going to be setting up you know, different kind of areas within that waterfront and, and you know, some of them will be cordoned off and things where, you know, the pitches are happening. Um, we've also got the Start Me Up happening as part of that bigger umbrella event. And it's basically a business matching where startups can potentially meet with um, investors, mentors, corporates, as well as other kind of um, potential partners as well that they can sign up for. And that's going to be done at scale. We're expecting about- How do you, you, know, you sign in for that? Is it all via you know, Start Me Up or HK or is that a separate, separate thing? It's basically, if they go to the Jumpstarter um, website, you can actually sign up for this. But if people are interested, please do reach out to us and, um, you know, we'd be happy to advise them. We've got offices um, around the region. So, you know, reach out to your local InvestHK office or, or contact our team directly and we'd be happy to, to help. So that's jumpstarter.hk. Very nice. So we started out talking about, you know, the parties. Tell us about the parties. What What's going to go on? Because, you know, we all know, you know, these conferences are great, but you're sitting down and people on the telephones. But there's a bit of kind of networking is obviously de rigueur. And I think now, from my experience, like I said, it's like teenagers coming out of the library, right? Everybody wants to meet everybody. So piles of name cards still, although Apple's new phone allows you to tap but, or WeChat or LinkedIn scanning QR code. Tell us about the parties. I, I see and I, there's going to be a lot of parties, right? So Yeah, um, as you can probably imagine. It's very hard when you work for Invest Hong Kong because I've spoken to people like Charles before and he does this amazing job of appearing at more than one venue at the same time. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how that happens. This is before cloning, before AI, before Avatar. <laughs> I, I don't know how, how, is this a special training you get? Uh, like working for Invest Hong Kong, you, you kind of split yourself. They're in multiple venues. It's very interesting. You, you do. I mean, during like, you know, events like this, you do have to sort of prioritize and, and basically spread yourself around several events and and you know one night or one day and and that's what we're going to be doing our whole team is going to be doing that but there are going to be like lots of like networking drinks happening there's going to be like you say the after parties you know whether we're talking about you know, after the Game On event, for example, their parties are always a lot of fun, the after parties. Um, there's also, um, you know, a, a UK kind of company called um, 
called Rev, actually, who are going to be doing this reverse kind of um, investor pitching event one evening as well on the 13th of November. It's not up in our calendar yet because we're still getting the details. But, you know, there's going to be like something like, um you know, seven to 10 investors is going to be pitching to oh, startups. That's a great actually. idea. That's a great idea because- yeah. Investors usually sit there, you know, kind of come to me, come to me, right? Like, uh, it's uh, it's a very good idea. I like that. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And this, this is a, a UK media company who've done this quite, a, you know, quite a few times. And every time it's gone down, down a storm. So there's that happening. We've got like a, a delegate, um, a delegate actually of UK tech companies who's going to be doing a showcase as well of what they're doing um, there's going to be like web3 kind of um, and blockchain kind of parties going on in fact invest Hong Kong and um, Alibaba Entrepreneurs Fund we're also going to be having a uh, hosting an invite only networking drink so for people who are interested um, send us an email and um, we'll, we'll basically see if we can get you in there What's the, uh, what, don't tell me the email, is it like start me up at investhongkong.gov? What, what's the email address? <laughs> it's, it's basically start me up hk at investhk.gov.hk. I know it's a little bit of a mouthful. Lots of HKs yeah. in, just in case you didn't know. H, sorry, HK. So, um, yeah, it's been great chatting. And what do you like? Um, I guess the tickets are all are all organized by the various parties behind it, right? So it's not, you're not the Invest Hong Kong, as I've always understand, like kind of brings it all together, right? You're the, you're the, the nest, and then the eggs are all provided by all the various uh, event organizers and stuff. So I, I guess people, if they need to find the venues or the events, they just go to startmeup.hk, and they yes. then find the various... Uh, event organizers through that is that right so there's not it's not like you have one pass like a passport that takes you across everything you have to sign up individually is that right that's correct actually it is a, a number of different event organizers involved so there will be separate kind of registrations required for each event why that's a good you should do that in the future i know a company that can help you with the the one passport right i mean you know those companies that do the uh the straps for like when you go to music festivals. Yeah. I, I think that'd be great just to have that on and go anywhere you go in Hong Kong, right? You could charge it to start me up or whatever. We need to we need to bring it all together, Jane, right? That's the next goal. <laughs> 2024. We actually tried this. We actually tried this, Napoleon. We did have like a passport, a start me a passport that, you know, people can basically purchase and, you know, get access to all the tickets. But it was actually not really picked up at all. I mean, surprisingly yeah, low, and yeah. and I think it's, yeah, I think people who may go to one of the events may not be interested in in another one that is like a, you know, the topics and the industry is quite different. Um, so all these kind of learnings that you know that we we've done over the years. I mean, we can definitely look at it again if we think that there's going to be a lot of interest again in that single kind of pass. But it tends to bring the the prices a little bit higher and things as well. So. I think people would prefer just to say, okay, that's the one I'm particularly interested in. I'll just register for that one. Yeah, but what you're missing out on is not the pass for the conference, it's the pass for parties. That's where that's where I think people are a little bit more loose, right? They don't care whether it's fintech or prop tech. They'll just want to go and meet everybody, especially if you've flown in. But uh, anyway, I'll let you get back to it because you've got press conferences, you've got all of that um but thanks a lot and i i look forward i'm in fact i'm planning a web wednesday i'm going to ambush something along the way there so i will be there with a rather interesting uh Hong Kong startup that's doing all kinds of stuff in payments oh Hong excellent Kong. hopefully uh, i will see you there or maybe meet you at a party or on a tram or your clone at another party we will see <laughs> come over and if you're going to come over i'll make time for sure yeah. all right thank you very much great to chat Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye.